Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it is time for my client Lewis's vlog. And we started the week off with a bench press, a normal pause bench. Uh, he got a small PR. Now a little bit of grinding up there. The mid-range getting close to the lockout got a little grindy on him. So, uh, interestingly enough though, uh, noticed that it wasn't off the chest. So all that incline work and the speed benching we've been doing has done him a lot of good. Right, it's doing him a lot of good because he's pretty fast off the chest. So he, for him, that was a true max, and it didn't grind until at least the mid-range. So I'm actually pretty happy about that. So we've got him to, to an unusual place as far as that goes. Um, and a reminder for those who saw part one, uh, again, Lewis is rebuilding. Right, He never got to an advanced level, obviously. We were just kind of getting up towards being an intermediate. He had just deadlifted four plates aside when he got hurt and then he got sick. So he's had a surgery. Uh, he's had illness that put him out of the gym for months uh, to where he, he couldn't train. Uh, you know, and he's been battling with that a little bit still. And yet he's in here putting in the work. We're getting him stronger. We're coming back and we're seeing PRs, you know, uh, they're small PRs or like five kilo PRs. Uh, and I don't remember the exact number. I don't have the sheet in front of me, but that was a bench press PR for him. Right, so we're doing we're doing really good there. All right, uh, so after that we do normal pause benching. Then he does JM presses. Notice he's now able to put a little bit of weight on the bar. He's not using just the empty bar anymore. Uh, and after that we just we do back work. We do shoulder work, triceps, things like that. So he does. Uh, I wanted him to do barbell rows. We ended up doing a bent over row, and he was a little confused. He didn't he didn't know the difference, and that's okay. A lot of people don't. So uh, again, pretty normal. This is called a bent over row that he's doing right now. Okay, a barbell row is off the floor. People call that a penlay row oftentimes. But keeping in mind, before Glenn Penlay was uh, coaching for the U.S. Olympic weightlifting team, people just called it a barbell row. And it's funny because, you know, when Glenn Penlay has been asked about it, he said the same thing. He's like, it's just called a barbell row. I don't know why they need to name it after me. So it's just kind of funny. Um, <laughs> And of course, for his smaller single joint movements, we do some lateral raises, we do some, some tricep band press downs. Although I would like him to do these press downs a little faster and not worry about that, that spreading out at the bottom. But, you know, at least he's doing them. Uh, and so these are his smaller movements. You know, again, putting in a little bit of delt work, a little bit of tricep work. He, why? He's a, he's a younger guy. He cares about this stuff. He's in college, you know. He, he wants those things, and that's okay. Uh, I don't mind programming that stuff. And I'm almost at a point where I think with a lot of my, my clients, I almost kind of want to run with the idea of what some other West Side type coaches and stuff have done. They're just giving lifters free time, meaning 10, 15 minutes at the end of their workout to do anything that they want, whatever pump work, anything they feel like doing, whether they want to do more abs, if they want to do some biceps, whatever, right? Free time. <laughs> just come in and do what you want. Just make sure you do it good form get a pump whatever you're doing um, it's not a bad idea all right box squats he got a PR also and I, I think it might have been like a 10 kg PR um, so again his box squats going up we're we're seeing improvements there again taller lankier guys you know with the longer legs it takes a lot of work to bring squats up and we can't just have them squat oftentimes their quads don't grow fast enough if we do that so in his case uh, notice what we do uh, we do good mornings. We do some inverted rows, stuff like that. But I also have him do single leg exercises. So you'll notice again, his max effort day, uh, we do split squats with dumbbells. And uh, he's going to work on getting a bigger, a better rack because we really need a, we need a better rack. Uh, this, this is not going to last very long for his needs, right? Not ideal, especially when we're, we're hitting maxes and stuff. And... You know, here's the thing that comes up with a rack. Not only is it safer for my conjugate guys, you don't have a bunch of bands and chains and specialty bars. We can do all sorts of pen work for Maxis. Right? It gives us a lot of other exercises we can work with. Um, but in his case, though, you know, we're just we're keeping it very, very basic. Keeping it basic. Uh, but I think in his case, though, watching this footage, it's time to adjust his supplemental lifts, looking at where he's missing and stuff. So I'm going to make some changes, I believe, uh, moving forward for him. And I think we, needed, we need to do that. But he then finishes up with uh, band pull-throughs, 
course, here's his single leg exercises. He has these kind of order. I just downloaded them to the order he sent them to me in, and they're slightly out of order. Uh, but notice he's getting a lot deeper now on the single leg exercises. I told him before, I'm like, look, we, we have to get the linking position at the bottom, right? They're a complete waste otherwise. So he's, he's gotten better about finding the angles to do that with. And, you know, notice it doesn't take us very heavy dumbbells. You know, fatigue builds up pretty quickly on these. Uh, because, again, you have, you know, your body weight involved <laughs> on one leg. So you don't always need really heavy dumbbells. People are like, well, you know, this person here does it with hundreds. Well, they're a pretty strong squatter. If they're doing sets of 10 on those for full range of motion with 100 in each hand, they probably can squat a lot. And I have him finish up with his hanging leg raises. So for the remainder of the workout, it's going to be the dynamic work just for brevity's sake. We're not going to show all the supplemental lifts again because you guys have, have seen them all the first time through. Um, but on his speed bench day, we rotate grips, uh, which is common for a lot of my lifters. He does three sets wide grip, three sets medium, three sets close. Although in this case, they're really not wide wide. It's just pinkies on the rings and in between it and close grip. Like true wide grip, you're outside the rings. You know, if anything, pinkies on the rings is, is baseline. It really might be a medium grip or close to. Uh, and then, of course, I have him do incline benching. And I make him do it with a pause. None of this touch and go. We pause on the chest. This is why his bar speeds are getting good off the chest. I think we can pin it down to this exercise right here. Okay. And because it's so good at that, I like my people to always pause on their incline benching. And then after that, his upper body stuff on dynamic effort looks just like his uh, other day. It's the same, same lifts. Uh, we get over to dynamic effort lower. He's in a conventional phase again. So we're doing box squats, speed boxes. Uh, then he does speed pulls, conventional. And we rotate waves of sumo and conventional for him so that we have some variation. And I only have him do singles because there's been issues in the past for him on repping deadlifts. Um, so for now, he does singles. It's not going to stay that way indefinitely. And then, of course, we finish up with the same stuff we did before. He does good mornings. He does inverted rows. He does split squats, band pull-throughs, and abs. And you guys can watch him finish up the bit of stuff here, uh, just a couple of the other exercises. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.